Finally. Finally, man. We finally giving y'all the top 25 greatest best basketball NBA players of all time. I did all the positions. So if you haven't seen that already, I would advise you to watch those before you get to this one. But I will be honest. I made all those lists and this one in the same time. This was months in the making. Now, one thing I will say, there's probably like 30 different versions of this video. That's why it took so long for this one to drop in comparison to how I was dropping the other ones kind of weekly. And yeah, man, I'm going to be honest. There may be a little bit more inconsistencies in comparison to those lists to this one list because I had to change it too many times. But I can assure you, I did a... Bro, the amount of research I did for this video, man, I'm going to be honest. When it's all said and done, I'm going to be honest. This is for surely my list, my opinion on all these players. And these are my 30 best players of all time, pretty much, because going to have some honorable mentions. But yeah, top 25 greatest. Uh, I had an interesting top two, but I had to end it up, you know what I'm saying? I had to end up going with the regular you know what i'm saying i ain't gonna lie but yeah uh you guys do want more videos like this i do plan on giving y'all a tier list for the point guard shooting guards small forts power forts and centers for the nba right now I also reacted to some like bleach report articles already that they dropped with came to like the top 30 guards wings bigs top 100 players in the league so if y'all do want that as well make sure to like the nba season is less than a month away so we're gonna be we're going to be pushing out a lot more NBA content, a lot regular. That's why I'm trying my artists to get this video out. Hopefully, this video does come out on a Sunday. If it don't, then I'm, I'll probably revise this again. But, yeah, with that being said, no more talking. Let's hop into it. Alright, so I've been into it before we get too deep. If you've seen my other positions, you pretty much already know my criteria. But when it comes to my criteria of making any type of list in terms of NBA players, it has to do with mainly what you did at your peak, your prime. And I do value two-way ability, like defense and offense. And if you like an offensive player, you will be on my list if you like just that good of an offensive player. But you have to, like, in my opinion. Like, you can't, like, be too high without being able to be pretty much great on both ends of the court. So, that's kind of a big deal for me. So, there's going to be some people that may be, may be like, bro, this dude should be higher. But if he's not that good of a defender, and I think there's just better, like, better overall players than that said player, I'm going to put him higher on the list because that's what I favor. But, yeah, um, it was a couple of different things that I did have to change on this list in comparison to the other positions, like I did say in the intro. I think this is going to be my best list out of all of them because of all the revisions I did have to do on this video. Um, so, yeah, for the effort, though, if you haven't already dropped a like, drop the like. No more talking. Let's hop into it. Honorable mentions. We're not going to try to take too long on none of these, to be honest, because it's 25 players that we got to get into. So, first honorable mention is James Harden. Now, I'm going to be honest. I would probably be looked at as like a James Harden hater, but to be real, it's kind of tough not to put James Harden as at least an honorable mention for a top 25, and there's going to be more than 30 players really, so I guess you could say he's not really top 30 for me, because I think the honorable mentions are kind of in order for me, but for the most part, James Harden had to put this man in here as an honorable mention because as an offensive threat, it's just like his peak offensively is ridiculous. Now, you can say the Mike D'Antoni, all that, but... I'm going to be honest, as a playmaker, I think he can be a little overrated at times, but he's still one of the best playmakers of all time. Um, scores, one of the most... I would say he's one of the best scores of all time, but it's like... It's kind of interesting how you can go about that, but I think as a ball handler, he kind of is underrated. I never really hear people say him as like the best ball handler of all time, but he has like the ball security and he has the, the moves to be, pretty much get him open or get to the rim at will like his ability like his like his ability to like play for that step back or get to the rim like he really had no in-between game at one point like he came into the league and then at the beginning of his Rockets tenure he was really a mid-range scorer but then he kind of the Rockets kind of just completely changed him and his hand was allowing him to really become like really just a three and rim type player but yeah James Harden the reason why he wouldn't be on this list is obvious because of like the playoffs and the defense, but I have to at least have him as an honorable mention. All right, next. Now, this is going to be one that a lot of the old heads going to be like, bro, how you don't got him on Moses Malone? Now, Moses Malone, I said this when I did the centers. One of the best rebounders of all time. 
I'm gonna be honest, the bigs are kind of tough to rank against like guards and wings. So if you have them in your top 25, personally, I'm not even mad at that. So anybody that get in the comments going crazy because I don't have Moses Malone, I'm not mad at you having them in there because I'm gonna be honest, ranking bigs against guards can just kind of be inconsistent. It's just really tough to do because there's certain things that bigs provide defensively that are so important, but offensively, sometimes they're not that crazy. And that's pretty much Moses Malone. Like he's one of the best rebounders of all the time. He's a pretty good defender, but offensively, he's not really much but a rebounder that can keep getting the rebound and keep getting the rebound until he scores. And it's, it was he was one of the best players in his prime. And I'm having him as an honorable mention of a top 25 players of all time list. So I'm not saying that he's bad, but it's like, it's kind of really more so defense and mainly rebounding. Wow, but we'll put him here. Like his offense is cool, but yeah. And another thing about Moses Malone, people try to act like KD. I, I did a video on this, but people try to act like KD was the first person jumping ship. Bro, don't look at what Moses Malone did before he joined the uh, 76ers. Just, just go look. Just go look. All right, next is the Dirk and the Whiskey, um, honorable mention. Um, I think this is kind of an easy thing for me if you see my criteria and what I kind of value. Um, people really trying to kind of weigh heavily at 2011, but I'm going to be real. Uh, Dirk and the Whiskey has kind of like Harden. He kind of has those years where he like just flops in the playoffs. And they may even be worse because like there was years where we all know about what happened with the Warriors where he lost in the first round. But he has other years that's almost even worse than that in terms of player performance sometimes like the the warriors that year they kind of they kind of just kind of outplayed the, the mavericks i can't lie but there's other years where dirk just flat out just didn't play to the same standard as he did in the regular season like he had mvp seasons where he just didn't do it to me but uh 2011 was a big deal i do think they kind of overrate his run because in the finals i don't think he was even the best player in the finals in that year but he did win his team did play better than the other team but um, I think that team was just a great defensive team. So I think people may overrate that a little bit. But for Dirk to have that run that he did have, that it, I cannot lie. That is a very substantial run where he ended up being the young Thunder, beat Kobe, and he beat the big three. He, that's like something that not too many players all time can really have on their resume. And that is a real big deal. But the thing that really holds them off for me is really like the playoff translation and the defense. It's just... Kind of is what it is. I have to keep it consistent. All right, next is Charles Barkley. Now, Charles Barkley, honestly, it's really tough with him because I don't really think he was that good of a defender, but he was kind of a, I wouldn't say ahead of his time because when you look back, some of these power forwards were honestly kind of pretty decent as a playmaker in terms of how many assists per game he was getting. But Charles Barkley out of the mid post was pretty, pretty tough to stop, especially in that era where they had that legal defense. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't think a lot of people even fully understand what a legal defense really even was or even is because the way people act like, they act like you couldn't double team. The reason why it came about was so that they couldn't triple team. That's the whole reason for the rule. Because in the, in the late 80s, when it came to MJ, it, like literally MJ, that's why they call it the MJ rule is because they were triple teaming him. So, um, but people like Charles Barkley took super advantage of the rule and um, it kind of make him look more better as a playmaker than he probably is. The only thing I say with Charles Barkley, how would he fit in other eras? I think he would still be pretty dominant as a rebounder. I think he's honestly a solid scorer, but the other things in this game that kind of isn't that great, like his defense in my opinion, I think his playmaking may be a little bit overrated. So, yeah, but for the most part, again, the real reason why he's not on here is really defense. I'm just trying to give y'all an explanation to get y'all to be real. All right, next is Carl Malone. Now, this is going to be the craziest one for a lot of people. But Carl Malone, honestly, to be real, um, it's just somebody had to be left off when it came to Carl Malone. In my opinion, you could argue he's like a top. I don't want to lie and say he's a top five player of his era, but... He's, you could argue he's a top five, top four, maybe, player of his era. I'm trying to think of who else would be over him. I know two for sure he's not touching. But, yeah, he, yeah, he, he I guess you could say he's a top five player of his era. Um, but for the most part, Carl Malone, um, honestly, he was kind of ahead of his time with, like, the shooting ability he did have. The, he was a, a dominant scorer for sure. He honestly was not even that bad of a defender, to be honest with you. It just was honestly tough to, like... I really wanted to put him on, but I guess I kind of just gave him the slight 
that I had to give him. So he just ended up being an honorable mention. But I'm not mad at somebody saying that he should be in the top 25. I'm not really mad at it. All right, next is Scotty Pippen. Now, Scotty Pippen was really, really the toughest one for me to not put on the list because where Carl Malone probably can fit in other er eras, I think Scotty Pippen could literally, like, he could play right now today and he may be way better. I'm going to be honest. As, from the distributing aspect and his defensive ability, versatility, bro, Scotty Pippen would be pretty crazy in today's era. I'm not going to lie. So, um, even if you put him in other eras besides today, the 2000s, the 2010s, he would be pretty crazy. So, Scotty Pippen was really tough because he can really play in so many different eras. I think his peak and prime is really what hold it for me, where it's not as crazy as some of the people I'm going to have on the list. But with that being said, you can't really hold off the fact that he has six NBA championships. He is a number two option. So that kind of was tough to put him. Like, how would he be if he was a number one option? Uh, we only seen really one crazy as a number one option. That was the one year that MJ was gone, and they kind of made it to the conference finals. And he had, like, the best record in the East, I believe. But, yeah, Scottie Pippen, for the most part, it's kind of the only thing that really holds him back for me. Like, I only really seen one year where it was really good for him as a number one option. I really didn't see anything else. But I think he could do that, which is why I do have him as the highest honorable mention on my list. But he just couldn't make my top 25. But in terms of, like, the defense ability, I wanted to put him on here. Trust me, because I love defense. But his offensive ability in terms of scoring is just not that crazy to hold up with his defense. If I would say, if I had to say one thing about Scotty, it would have to be that. And all right, that's all the honorable mentions. Let's hop into the top 25. Now, when it comes to the 25, like I said, this changed so many times. Some people that was honorable mentions had to make the top 25. Some people that's not honorable mentions had to get put out. It's just that simple. But coming in at number 25, I actually had to do much higher on the original list, but Isaiah Thomas. When it comes to Isaiah Thomas, um, I love to say Isaiah Thomas, pound for pound, one of the best players all time at six foot one. His ability to dribble, his ability to play, make his ability to score was very, very underrated for his era. But with that being said, he can kind of get overrated in some aspects, and I had to really make sure I did my my due diligence with a lot of things. And I will, I will, I would like to say that um, I believe that he's a very underrated steal, but I may have been overrated him a little bit before because I think I had him originally at like. I think I originally had him at like 17. So I think I was going a little too crazy in terms of the people I had him over. And when you see the next couple of names, I think you kind of will understand. But there may be some, or not, there's definitely going to be some names you probably just genuinely don't agree with. And that's fine. That's what, it, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own opinion, their own bias, and how they, they do their list. But this is my list. It's just that simple. But Isaiah Thomas coming in at number 25. Um, one of, he had, like His resume is crazy as well. He beat the MJ Bulls. He beat the Lakers. Like, Come on, like, he's, he's, his resume is insane. He was part of, like, one of the best teams of all time with the uh, Detroit Pistons, the Bad Boy Pistons, whatever you want to call it. And, yeah, uh, Isaiah Thomas comes in at number 25 on the list. All right, next is David Robinson. Now, David Robinson is another player that I had to put on the list. I don't know how originally I had, bro, as an honorable mention, but, nah, he had to be on the list. In terms of his defensive ability, his offensive punch, now, when he came into the league, he was one of the best rookies ever, but that was because he was really more of an older rookie because he had to go into, like, I think he was in the military. I don't know if it was the Navy or whatever, but I just know that he he was not in the league, like, off the jump like a lot of guys. Um, he had to do his little due diligence for what he was doing. But, yeah, he came into the league pretty crazy. Like, he like he pretty much came into the league pretty much straight into his prime. And he had, a like, an eight-year stretch where he was giving you at least 20 three plus points with at least 10 plus rebounds and three plus blocks every single year and he was just one of those players that i believe if you put him in today's era you put him in the era before him i'm gonna be honest you put him in a couple of them eras before him he would look like bro he would look like <laughs> i'm gonna be honest bro would look like a straight transformer bro like he like they it would look like a straight alien like he wouldn't even make sense like it literally wouldn't make sense like the way people talk about wilt that's probably what David Robinson would look like in a lot of them eras before him. But, yeah, David Robinson, um, in terms of his ability, bro, on both ends, um, I think he was really good. I will say, though, in terms of the playoffs, it kind of be a little wishy-washy offensively. 
But defense was ne- it was, that was just something that just never was never changing. He's one of the best defenders of all time, and that's not really debatable in my opinion. He has an MVP, two rings, a rookie of the year. Um, like he, he is a great uh, thing. I'm gonna be honest. If he played in any other era, to be honest, he may have way more defensive player of the years. To be real with you, he just happened to play in an era with probably the best defender ever. But it just is what it is. And yeah, David Robinson comes in at number 24 on the list. All right, and coming in at number 23 on the list. Elgin Baylor. Now, Elgin Baylor was a tough one to rank because, yeah, I just had to. I just I, it just was tough to rank. I'm gonna be honest. The older, the older, older guys. When you go back and watch it, yeah, but like when you see how much the game has just evolved, it's just tough to like try to like to be in between like not overrating it and not underrating it too far and like respecting the elders. I guess you could say. But in terms of a greatness t- uh list, it's tough to put him any higher because he really didn't win anything. And as soon as he retired, the Lakers finally won. So it's like was he holding them back? I don't know. I wasn't there in that time. I'm just able to see what I was able to see. And we able to know what we able to know now. I can't really do nothing about that. But in terms of what he was doing in his era, now I will say this is adjusted to pace. So, or not adjusted the pace, but this is in a pace heavy era. He was averaging for his career 13.5 rebounds at a six foot five small forward. 13.5. It, one year, he averaged 20 rebounds for the season. So, yeah, and I kind of can tell you. Now, his best year probably statistically is when he averaged 38 points with 18.6 rebounds and five assists. Like, I'm gonna be honest, like, there's some, some of these, if you go look at bro's stats, it's, like, kind of crazy, but for the most part, bro, like I said, it's just tougher to put him higher, because, like, he just didn't win anything, and in terms of greatness, you have to have some type of accomplishment, like, the only thing, he he didn't even win no MVPs, he was 11-time All-Star in 14 season, he was rookie of the year, so it's like, yeah, like, I don't even know what I'm really supposed to do with that, but for the most part, I think Elgin Baylor can kind of get underrated, I think, he, he was kind of before his time, he was doing drill moves that, like, was really influential like he was doing crossovers in the 60s and i don't think a lot of people even know that so yeah elgin Baylor comes in at number 23 on the list all right coming in at number 22 the biggest hot take of the video but if you've seen the power force you will already understand this anthony davis anthony davis comes in at number 22 on my list now at the point of this video i don't know he may even get an even crazier resume i think that AD, I don't think people even understand how young AD still is. I think he just turned 30. So with him just turning 30, he already has some of the most, like, crazy two-way seasons that I think people just have now started to underrate. Like, his peak where he was going from, like, the Pelicans, I think his peak would probably be that 2020 season because of the bubble and what he was doing. I think he was the best player on a championship team. A lot of people may disagree with that because LeBron is on that team. But in that moment, I was saying AD was better. I said the season, AD was better. Like, LeBron even took a backseat and became a playmaker. Now, if you want to say the finals, LeBron was better, okay, that's fine. But LeBron was literally taking a backseat to Anthony Davis. That's just not even really debatable. And then if you want to talk about defensively, what are we talking about? I don't even know what to, like, there's nothing to talk about. Um, but, yeah, um, Anthony Davis, honestly, in terms of his defensive ability, one of the more underrated players of all time, I'm going to be honest. I would really have to think about where would AD rank as a defender all time. He got to be, he got to be pretty high. Um, he's definitely not top five or anything, but he's got to be pretty solidly high on that list. Now, in terms of an offensive player, I think he is underrated as well on that. He averages 24 points per game for his career. Um and he's played 10 seasons already. So I don't even know what to really tell you. Um, he has a stretch of season where he went from 28, 28 to 26 to 26. So, yeah, bro. I'm going to be honest. Anthony Davis, He had, he's had an interesting career so far. Um, I think after the last year showing, he may even be able to keep it going for even longer. So I'm interested to see. The injuries is really what's kind of hurt him a lot. But, yeah, um, Anthony Davis, um, in terms of the playoff, translation in terms of the defense the two-way ability the one hole he probably does has is the playmaking he's not really the greatest playmaker but besides that like i don't really even know what you could even say he has the versatility the rim protection i don't really know what you could say besides the uh the playmaking and injuries that's just really what it is all right next coming in at 21 jerry west now jerry west originally i had him at 23 but i had to lower isaiah thomas a lot because i was just overrating bro a little bit i i i, I can't even lie but with that being said, 
Jerry West comes in at number 21. Like I said with uh, Elgin Baylor, it was tougher to put these older guys a lot higher because uh, I just didn't want to overrate them, but I also didn't want to underrate them. But it, when it came to Jerry West, it was kind of easy to put him higher than uh, Elgin Baylor because not only was he just a better player in my opinion, not only is he like a, out of all the, I'm going to be honest, out of all the 60s guards, he's more translatable. Now, when it comes to bigs, it's just easier to translate some of the bigs, especially guys like Will. But Jerry West, like, he was shooting from pretty deep consistently, and that was in the 60s. So, yeah, um, Jerry West was a really, really good, like, he was a jump shooter before jump shooting was really a big deal. And, yeah, Jerry West, he even has the championship, the MVP. Now, if you want to say he's the biggest loser of all time, then that would probably be a fact. I think bro has, like, nine finals ales. So, that is kind of crazy, but it, I'm going to be real. It's not really his fault in really most of those series. It may have been, he may have been part of the problem one time at most. But yeah, bro, Jerry West, he he's he's had, he's had his fair share of losses in the finals. I think it may be seven or nine. I I'm, I don't know how I'm mixing that up, but yeah, um, he only has one ring. But yeah, I'm gonna be honest for his career. I think he has one of the best careers in the NBA history. Um, especially for the older guys. But yeah, Jerry West comes in at number 21 on the list. Now we moving on into the top 20 players of all time. Coming in at number 20, Oscar Robinson. Now, Oscar Robinson, honestly, um, if you are a guy that loves stats, Oscar got it. If you are a guy that needs stats but also need the uh, awards, Oscar got it. Like, I'll be honest, like, for his career, he averaged 26, 8, and pretty much 10. He's one of the most, I would say Oscar is one of the more underrated playmakers of all time. When I hear a lot of people talk about top five playmakers of all time, I hear people say Magic. I hear people say guys like Curry. I hear people say guys like Steve Nash. But I'm going to be honest, even with the, the numbers Oscar was putting up, I'm going to be honest, like, I never really hear Oscar. Now, one thing I'll say about Kareem, bro, that people really don't really ever speak on is the fact that Kareem pretty much for his whole career had the best PG in the league for his entire career. He, bro went from having Oscar Robinson to Magic Johnson. Like, I've never even heard anyone ever say that. Like, when it comes to a lot of these bigs, bro, that's like the best of all time, they all pretty much play with a crazy guard. Like, it's honestly crazy looking at it. Now, I don't know if the guard was getting uplifted or if the big, but, like, there has to be something, like, going on there. I'm going to be honest. Like, you look at all the bigs pretty much, except for one big. I'm going to be honest. Except for one big. It happens with everybody. I'm going to be honest. So, that's very interesting to me. But Oscar Robinson, honestly, I may be underrating him on this list. People may even... I've seen some people even have him in, like, previous years when I reacted to a video. I think somebody even had him, like, 13. So, I may be underrating him to some. But for me, um, in terms of the two-way ability, I don't think it's on the level of some of the other people I'm going to have. And I don't think his offensive uh, output is as good as some of the, like, the... I guess one way players you could kind of say. All right, coming in next is Julius Irvin. Now, Julius Irvin is a very tough one to rank because we all know that he played in the ABA. But with that being said, uh, Julius Irvin, he still ended up with an 11 year career where he had him an MVP, he had him an NBA championship just like Oscar Robinson. Now, in those 11 years, Julius Irvin made the All Star every single year of his career. But yeah, um, it's just kind of tough because of that. But now, in terms of like influence, Julius Irvin is one of those guys that was like paving the way for like that next crop of like wings because I don't know if y'all realize when it comes to Jerry West, Ariel Jim Baylor, uh, Oscar Robinson, this was in the era of the big man league. But the, I would say the first real influential guy that really paved the way for the next generation for real in terms of like the wings and guards, I would say is Julius because if we the main like if you even listen to guys like Shaq, that's a big. He would say that like his most influential player was Julius Irvin, but we all know how much influ how much uh, Julius Irvin influenced guys like Michael Jordan and stuff like that. And then we all know how much influence Michael Jordan. So if you really want to do like that, because I've been seeing people say like the Kanye influence that joint guy, he influenced this and that guy that he influenced this, and they be trying to like, bro, if you want to do something like that with Julius Irvin, fine. I'm not really gonna do that. But with that being said, I think Julius Irvin is honestly one of the more underrated guys. I used to have him a lot higher, but I just couldn't bring myself to put him any higher than 19 because, to be honest, a lot of the guys that's higher than him are either going to be going higher and higher or they just kind of just stood firm in that spot. I just don't really know how 
much more I could do. Maybe if he had more years in the NBA, I could put him higher. But for now, with this being an NBA list, I'm going to have to have him at 19. All right, next. I'm going to be honest. Every single player that's, like, current is going to be kind of, like, controversial. But I'm going to be honest. I don't think this is going to be that crazy. Especially if he has an even crazier year this year than, like, or even just com stays consistent with what he's been doing for the past three years. I'm going to be honest. He's probably going to go even higher on this list. And that's going to be tough because the person I have high, above him is one of my favorite players of all time. Very disrespectful to me. But, yeah. Uh, Jokic. Now, when it comes to Jokic as an offensive player, I would argue Jokic is the only offensive player ever to have no hold. No hold. I don't even know what you could possibly say bro's hole is. Now, if you want to say that he should be lower on the list because he only has eight years, that's perfectly fine. But the fact that he should have three MVPs, now, that's not going to be a thing I do for everybody, so I'm going to just leave that there because there's a lot of people that should have way more MVPs. But um, he has now one of the best playoff, like, performances of all time. And I'm going to be honest, I think people just kind of underrate his defense. I think he's not a negative defender. He's just a, a average, okay defender. I think... Um, he just doesn't provide things in a way that they think a big man should. And a lot of the big gripes that people have in terms of his ability to switch out to guards, a lot of bigs that's like some of the best bigs of all time would struggle doing that in this era. Like, I don't know what you really want them to do with the way guards can dribble and how shifty guards are, especially the elite guards, especially the guards they say. Like, they say Jokic switching out to Curry. You know how good of an offensive player Stephen Curry is? I don't really know what they want uh, Jokic to do, especially at 6'11", 280. I don't really know what they want him to do in that situation. Like, even if you go look at the uh, the 2000s Lakers when they had Shaq, a lot of teams would just put Shaq in a pick and roll. That was, like, real game plan against Shaq. So, like, saying that's a negative for Jokic and why he would be a bad defender makes no sense. But in terms of the offensive ability, like, there's no holes. He can... He's a good free throw shooter. He's a great shooter in general in terms of like the mid-range and three-pointer. And that's what shooting is. Um, if you want to say three, three-pointer, it might be like his biggest weakness. But like he's not a bad three-point shooter. You've seen in the playoffs just this year, he shot 46% for a three. So like, bro, like and his, touch, his touch just in general. Whether you want to say the floater around the rim, one of the best of all time. Passing, we don't even need to get into that. So yeah, I don't even know what you would even want to say Jokic like hole is like you definitely can't say post I, I don't know what you would say i really don't know what you would say offensively he's just so gifted in so many different things um the one thing i would say his weakness is for sure for me i would say is athleticism people like to say defense but i would say athleticism i think that's gonna be the one thing that kind of holds him back no matter how many years he can really stack up peak wise prime wise no matter how many it's just gonna be tough for him to be like, in that high, high, high area because he's just not athletically gifted. But offensively, it's just really tough to even compare him to anything because he just does so much at such a high level. All right, next, Kevin Garnett. Now, Kevin Garnett, honestly, um, like I said, if Jokic keeps going crazy, it's going to be tough. But I may have to just admit it. Kevin Garnett may have to just move down. But Kevin Garnett, where Jokic is so versatile offensively, that is Kevin Garnett defensively. Kevin Garnett is able to really, I don't know if he's like a full-fledged one through five, but like he can guard one through five. Is he like a lock or every position? That's debatable, but he can switch out to guards. He can switch out the wings. He can definitely guard bigs. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. He's one of the most def versatile defenders of all time. He can play pass lanes. He can play great off the ball. He can be a great help side defender. He can be a great rim protector. He can be a great transition defender. There's not really... There's not really anything on defense that Kevin Garnett really is bad at. And even on offense, he's one of, he's a pretty versatile player as well. He's a really underrated playmaker. He's a really underrated shooter. He's a really underrated post player as well. I'm going to be honest. Kevin Garnett, in a lot of ways, is very uh, underrated. And I really do I really do value versatility in a lot of ways. Um, and Kevin Garnett and Jokic are definitely like two peas in a pod, but on opposite spectrum. But I would say Kevin Garnett does probably have... I would say, if you want to say... Um, Kevin Garnett should be higher for whatever reason. I can honestly understand it because the person I have next, I'm still up in the arms on this. I went back and forth on these three, to be honest. 
a lot. The next three, like him, the next guy, and the next guy, I went back and forth, back and forth. Jokic was just kind of, he was just in that spot perfectly. I'm not going to lie. I don't, he wouldn't go any higher. But this three trio, it was really tough for me to do this in order. But yeah, Kevin Garnett ends up coming in. I believe this is 17. So yeah. All right, coming in at 16, another current player. I know people going to be like, bro, you are, bro, you, you are current out. Yeah, Giannis. Giannis at 17. I'm going to be honest. Giannis has already accomplished so much in his young career. Where Jokic has already accomplished in like eight years where he had the two MVPs, a finals MVP and a championship. Giannis has accomplished that and more. He has the two MVPs. He has the finals MVP. He has the NBA championship. You could even argue Giannis, his, his run to the ring was like very, very amazing. I would say, uh, I will probably give... Jokic a little bit more credit because Jokic didn't really have the injury thing that Giannis dealt with because for, for no matter if Giannis just gets that one ring people forever are going to talk about how Kawhi Leonard got hurt how uh Anthony Davis got hurt how Kevin Durant's entire team pretty much got hurt how I think Jalen Brown was even hurt that year how it was bro bro I don't think I don't think he even I don't even think Curry's team was even in the playoffs that year so like that will forever be spoken about. He played Trey Young in the conference finals, and that was like a second or third year Trey Young. So like, yeah, bro, I, it's go. That's gonna be spoken about forever if he only gets that one ring. I think Giannis gets more rings, but I think that's that'll be spoken about. I personally don't really care as much because in terms of the playoff performance, I think the player performance was ridiculous like no matter if he won or lost i think it was ridiculous and i think that he pretty much earned his ring because you play who you have to play that's just what it really what it is at the end of the day but in terms of defensive ability um one of the mm, mm, he's definitely one of the best defenders of his era in terms of all-time defense i think i would say anthony davis is a better defender i think i would say kevin garnett is a far better defender it just is what it is but in terms of like I think that his ability to be a two-way player is so good. I think as a help defender, he's one of the best help defenders of all time. That's not really debatable. Transition player overall. I would say Giannis. I was seeing somebody have a conversation about Giannis and LeBron as a transition player. I'm going to be honest. If you want to say offense and defense, Giannis may be the best ever. Like, he's like, bro. I don't think there's no... I don't. I'm, I love LeBron, but in terms of Giannis being able to take four steps to go from one end of the court to the other... Whether you want to say it's on offense or defense, that is not anything no one else can do. Like, no one else can do that. So, yeah, Giannis is just the Greek freak. It's just nothing else you can really say about it. Um, but I would say, honestly, another thing about Giannis I do like is how hard he's worked. Because what he came into the league as and what he's turned himself into is insane. And then when it comes to the sheer offensive ability. Now, I'm interested to see what happens this year in terms of Giannis. Because Giannis has really been more of like a wing more than a big in terms of offense. But on defense, he's more of like a, a big, I guess you could say. Because he's more like the rim protector, help side defender type of guy. But Giannis, I, I think people have been saying that he needs to play a little bit more off the ball. So that his holes in his game cannot be shown as much because Giannis has very obvious flaws on offense he, he, he pretty much beats you through sheer will it's like literally sheer will athleticism and strength power you know what I'm saying so he's able to average these crazy stats because of how much on the ball he is I don't think people understand how much usage Giannis has on the Bucks. with him playing off the ball that's gonna make him offensively be a little bit he may be, a, I'm going to be honest, in some people's eyes, he's going to be, a, he's going to be look worse if his stats go down. But honestly, offensively, if he can become a better off the ball player where he, maybe he's used as a pick and roll man more, and he's not on the ball as much where his holes are not as glaring anymore, that could make Giannis a really, really, really just much better all around player. Because like, if you can't just take advantage of his holes where you can just pack the paint, um, it's going to be tough. Now, I think the thing with packing the paint, it really does depend on how good of a shooting team he has. And the Bucks every year have a pretty decent shooting team. When you play against a team that can actually put one person and then just kind of help, that's really kind of where it gets tough for Giannis, especially with his free throw ability if they foul him and stuff like that. But Giannis, um, like I said, when it came to KG, Giannis, and the next person, it was really tough. You could put KG above Giannis. You could put the next person below Giannis. It really owned you how you really value it. I value the peaks, the primes, the defense, the two-way ability, and all that. But, yeah, I can understand this. Much. All right, next. Now, I have, for the next two people, these are, in my opinion, the biggest 
what ifs in NBA history because these guys showed how good they could become. It's just the health really made it not last as long as it probably should have or could have, and they could have been even higher on this list. This guy, in my opinion, was in the debate as the best player in the league for, I'd say, a solid maybe six years. And I don't think people even understand how wild that is. Like, a solid maybe four to six. I would say four to six years. And I don't think people even understand how wild that really is in terms of, like, a greatest player of all time. But, yeah, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard comes in at number 15. Um, I don't really understand how you people even have these lists. I guess people just value longevity much more than me. I put longevity within it, but it's just not as important, in my opinion, what you were at your best. It's just not. I, I, I don't really know how to say it. Now, there are other people that have these crazy long careers where, like, they may not be in their prime, but you could really argue that they have multiple primes. <laughs> That's just a whole different thing. That's a whole different discussion. But when it comes to Kawhi Leonard, bro, what he's done in just 11 years, and even if you want to say just 11 years and he's gotten hurt, it may even be less than 11 years, to be real. Five All-Stars. So that's like, bro, because uh, you got to think about at the beginning of, year of his career, he was really more so a role player. He has two defensive players every year. So he's one of the best perimeter defenders of all time. When it comes to wing defenders, guard defenders, I think he's two. I would put him two. Personally, I think the only person that's better than him as a wing defender, uh, perimeter defender, is Scotty. That's it. Because I think Scotty's just a little bit better off the ball. And where Kawhi is probably, in my opinion, better on the ball, I think Scotty is better off the ball. Just kind of what it is. Now, he has the two defensive player of the years. He has two finals MVPs and two championships on two different teams. Now, that is kind of a big deal to me. I don't think people even understand how wild that is. Like, it's only a certain amount of people. And those two guys that did it, for real, are in the top five. So, like, Kawhi has a crazy, crazy resume. His prime, his prime peak, whatever you want to say, is up there with some of the best players ever. Like, and then, like, I'm going to be honest. People try to make, like, the super Kawhis where they try to mix his best defensive ability with his best offense you know what i'm saying year and stuff like that that's just not really what i'm doing if you want to do that he would for surely be higher but like you can't do that he was never like at his best defensively when he was at his best offensively but i think that Kawhi, as he's gotten injured i think people have kind of just forgot how they used to compare him with the other three guys that was of his era and there was years where he was i would say the best but people wouldn't agree with that but yeah uh Kawhi comes in at number 15 on the list coming in at number 14 this was very tough to put him this low i'm gonna be honest but hey i gotta be unbiased Dwayne wade now Dwayne wade in my opinion would be my go-to for the biggest what if if you wanted to say that was Kawhi, that's fine but the reason why i say these two are the best because you've seen what they could be at their best but they just couldn't keep it together in terms of the injuries and all that and that's just really unfortunate, in my opinion, because these are some of my favorite players to really watch. But I had to put the buys aside. Couldn't put them too high. Now, Dwayne Wade, um, I think that Dwayne Wade, with him understanding his injury, he was able to take a back seat. Um, I think Kawhi, as a number one player or a number one option, he may have had a longer career in terms of, like, uh, I can't even say that because even then when they was doing low management for Kawhi, he still was getting hurt. So now I can't even say that. But I think D-Wade could have been a number one for longer. I just don't think he would have won another ring. But the fact that he became a backseat, and you could really argue he was the number one in 2011. If Braun just could have played a little bit better, he may have another ring as a number one. You could say that. But I'm going to be honest. The real big thing with Kawhi, that, that's, to me, that's crazy. I don't think people understand this. He not only did a, a championship in a Finals MVP playing like a, as a role player, but he has years where he was one of the best player in the league on that same team, where he transformed from being the role player, maybe like a top three, top four player on the team, to becoming by far the best player on the team and being a top three, top two player in the league, to then going to another team and arguably being the best player in the league and getting another ring. That's a really crazy transformation, evolution as a player. It just is. It's not really nothing to discuss there. And then when it comes to Dwayne Wade, 
Dwayne Wade from the get go was pretty ridiculous. As a second year pro, he he got his team to the Eastern Conference Finals. But he did have Shaq, so people like to say that. The third year, I think Shaq kind of regressed, especially in the playoffs. And D Wade just went to a whole nother level, especially in the finals. And then I would even say in some of those years where like people was really struggling with those Celtics, I think D Wade had the best series that the big three Celtics defense. If you bro, if you know the big three Celtics, that's one of the more better defenses of all time, more underrated defensive teams of all time. D Wade had the best series against that team. It's just not really nothing to discuss there. I think D-Wade honestly could have had an even longer career. But his two-way ability, his scoring ability, his... his I don't think people even understand how good of a playmaker uh, D-Wade was. There was just years where D no one could even st stay in front of D-Wade in terms of a pick-and-roll ball handler. He would, in my opinion, be top three for me. Um, I think people would have other people, but he would be, in my opinion, top three to me. You could not double-team him. His ability to split the double-team, his ability to get to the rim at will, his ability to play in the post, maybe not had the best three-point ability, but when it was in the clutch, he had the ability to score no matter how, which way he had to do it. Um, I think as a off-ball player defensively, he's one of the best defense perimeter off-ball defenders. On-ball, I still think he's good. I just don't think he's elite like he is as an off-ball uh, wing defender. I guess perimeter defender, if that makes sense. But yeah, um, he has he's one of the better guard rim protectors as well, where that is kind of an underrated thing with D-Wade as well. Um, I could go on about D-Wade all day, my favorite player. So we just gonna move on. D-Wade comes at number 14. Coming in at number 13. Now, I will be honest. Um, this is going where it kind of gets controversial because you could really, I probably would. Okay, if we talking about best players, this guy would probably be high. I'm going to be honest. But if we have to put, like, your career into it, you have to put, like, your achievements into it, it I can't put him any higher. And this is probably the perfect placement for him. I don't know how you even would even you would have put him any lower. Like, there's only, like, maybe two guys you could really argue to put him over. Like, it, doesn't, it just wouldn't make sense. That's Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, bro, the influence Kevin Durant has on the league, I would argue, is bigger than the person I'm gonna have at number two. And a lot of people would even try to say he has a top five influence all time. I would disagree with that. And that's my second favorite player all time. So I can say that with, with no bias. This guy has a crazy influence. Karen Durant, in terms of rookie of the year, MVP, two finals MVPs, two championships. Um, if you really wanna say the Warriors, I'm gonna be honest, out of all the people that without the uh, success, I don't even know what to even really tell you, bro. The success that he, the, bro, what he made the Warriors for those years was in, in unbelievable and unstoppable. Now, I will say 2018, the Rockets almost got them boys out the way. So that's one thing I'll say. I do think that the um, Rockets could have beat them. I think the 2017 Cavs could have beat them. Personally, I do believe that. So I don't think that there was like just this no chance type of thing but the way people look at it it was really no chance should they ever have lost in my opinion no but i think that those teams could have beat them if that makes sense but those are really the only times that they really oh no 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 that's cap i was gonna lie uh Kawhi Leonard spurs could have beat them if he just never got hurt that was really the start of the downturn of Kawhi's career in terms of the turn for the worst of the injuries but kevin Durant score if i had to say my best scores of all time y'all don't even want to know I would, I would have kd either I can't put him one. I, I want to. I was gonna say one. I can't put him one. He would have to be two at the highest. I don't really know what the argument would be to put him any lower, but if you want to say three, four, there's no way you can go anywhere lower than four. He's a top four scorer all time. If you want to go year for year, if you want to go playoff translation. Now I will say people have kind of got it confused, bro. Just because KD got out of his prime. It's just not scoring. It's, it's just not translating to the playoffs the same as it used to. Let me be honest with you, man. Let me be real with you. The years that y'all holding on KD are some of the best years for other players. It's just simple. Bro, KD, as a playoff performer, is one of the best playoff performers ever. I, and the way that people talk about him is kind of ridiculous. I will be honest. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, it's easily one of the best scorers of all time. Offensive player... It's kind of debatable because of the the playmaking ability is not probably good enough to like hold up to like guys like probably the person I'm gonna have next and probably guys like Jokic, probably guys like the people that's at the top. But you know what I'm saying? Um, 
KD, in my opinion, scoring ability. I think he's versatile in terms of defense. He's versatile in terms of offense. And he's so influential to a lot of like these unicorn type, huge guard, huge bigs that can still have the ability to dribble and shoot. I think KD just influences just unbelievable like in terms of like what he's done for the league and i think it's really underrated all right next we got another probably crazy influential probably even more not even probably definitely even more influential in the league i would say because he's changed the way the entire league plays coming in at number 12 stephen curry now curry is tough because honestly if i had to put a slot there was one year curry had for sure in my opinion a a uh a stamp on the best player in the league, in my opinion. That was 2016. And what he did in the playoffs was tough because he was dealing with injuries. But I can't really... I mean, in the regular season, he was by far, in a way, the best player in the league. I, anybody that disagrees with that, I don't even really know what to tell you, bro. And that was even at the time when he wasn't even really playing defense. Curry is a guy, like, we're going to have later in the list, where you could really argue has multiple different primes. I would say his peak is kind of obvious, but if you want to say he has another peak because now he plays defense a lot better, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say Curry is like a good defender. I would say he's average. Like, he's just only so much he can do at that size and athleticism. Um, it's just kind of what it is. But when it comes to Stephen Curry, he's now have two rings without Kevin Durant. So for people like me that would love to have the arguments between Curry and KD, you can't really put him in terms of a greatness. You can't really put Curry above, or not Curry, but KD above K Curry. It's just not possible. But um, there's just a couple things that probably will hold him back in terms of like, in my opinion, of what I think his peak is. His defense was just not that crazy. And then the playoff translation, as in my opinion, for Curry has always been shaky. But that's really because he's a jump shooter. And like when the defense gets better, um, when the focus gets even stronger, when you have to play against one team for a full series, and they're just going to fully just play to stop you being a 6-2 guard that's a jump shooter shooting threes it is gonna be hard to be consistent when you're shooting a shot that's when you're shooting a shot that's like 40 percent or above that's efficient for it it's just not gonna look crazy all the time especially when you're getting guarded the way curry gets guarded so yeah but when it comes to the influence he's changed the league it's not even really close and when it comes to the best players in the league they've played they changed the way they've played because of this guy like, when it comes to the young guys coming into the league, I'm not even going to lie. I don't even think, like, we've even seen, like, the, the true young guys that's going to come into the league be and be super influenced because of Stephen Curry. I think that's still to come. When that comes, it's going to be crazy. So, yeah, uh, Stephen Curry, um, in terms of an offensive player, I would say he's top five for sure offensive players ever. Um, where you want to put him in at five, that's up to you. I, no, top two is not really not not really a chance for Curry. I'm sorry. It's just not really a chance here. Like, the holes in his game, like athleticism, can't really do nothing about it. But, like, in terms of, like, guys like Jokic, Jokic, in my opinion, is a better all-around offensive player. Like, if you want to say that gravity helps Curry, but, like, I'm going to be honest. As a playmaker, I'm still taking Jokic. Um, Jokic has stuff like post-scoring ability. Where Curry is going to wash everybody shooting-wise, especially threes. Like, there's just other ways people can make up in terms of, like, athleticism, in terms of, like, their ability to get to the rim and their ability to finish around the rim. Where Curry is actually an underrated finisher. But, um, yeah, the real reason why Curry could, is lower, um, I'd probably say Curry is, like, a top five favorite player of all time for me. I really wanted to put him higher, but I just couldn't find myself to do so. All right, and coming in at number 11. Now, this was a really, really tough person to put in this list because if I'm going to be honest, out of all the older generation players that I think could play in pretty much any era and be really ridiculous, is Wolf. Like, when you look at his measurables, when you look at his athleticism, I don't know what you're really supposed to do with that. Like, you throw this man in this era right here today, he's Shaq. You throw him in the era with Shaq, there's two Shaqs. You throw him in the era before Shaq, there's a Shaq. You throw him in the era before that, there's a Shaq. Like, he's literally uh, he's literally going to be pretty much Shaq with just probably more athleticism, just not as strong. Like, there's not really much you can do with a 7'1 guy that can run apparently a 4'4", be one of the highest jumping players in the league, and he's one of the fastest players in the league at 7'1", 275. I don't know what you want me to do. Um, he's one of the best rebounders of all time. He's one of the most, I'm going to be honest, in terms of scores, bro, I know I said KD's the number two scorer, but I'm going to be honest. Like I was saying with Moses Malone, 
it's just tough to compare bigs to wings to guards like bigs to bigs to bigs is very easy to compare but when you try to then compare a big to a guard how am i supposed to do that you try to compare a big to a wing how am i supposed to do that i don't know how i'm supposed to do that but yeah in terms of like scoring it's tough that's a very hard one to compare now defense is not that hard i think defense is always going to be swayed more so to bigs because of the ability to rim protect you can take a whole area away from the court from a team that's a very valuable thing that a team that you just can't really replace but yeah wilt chamberlain um the one thing that really holds him back from being any higher on this list is like pretty much he just played in a the older generation i, I can't lie like it's just the comp was just not that crazy in that era in my opinion and the fact that um he was just getting manhandled by a guy that i have to put over him because the guy not only was just more successful but like they he just couldn't beat this guy and his his play hit dropped every single time he played this guy whether you want to say the playoffs he was a playoff dropper it's kind of tough to even really say that will is a playoff dropper when you just see the stats that he's averaging it's like gonna be pretty impossible from the average d stats from the regular season to the playoffs now you could say if he can do it for 80 games why he can't do it for like maybe 16 that's a good argument i'm not gonna lie i would say because maybe he's playing like the best teams in the league more frequently the best defenders in the league more frequently maybe that would be what i would say but yeah uh will comes in at number 11 just outside of the top 10 and then coming in at number 10 now i know a lot of people gonna have him way higher probably the most successful not even probably the most successful player in nba history rp bill russell but yeah coming in at number 10 is bill russell all right this is a guy i just could not have outside the top 10 as much as i probably would have did it it's impossible it's just impossible uh, i'll be honest but when you look at will bill russell measurables compared to will bro uh it's just insane uh i would probably say in terms of greatness the second greatest defender of all time the second best defender of all time is a little different to me just like the second like best score is different to me you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. But in terms of, like, greatness, Bill Russell, you could really put him as high as, like... Well, on my list, it's kind of impossible for him to be as high as, like, four. Because, I mean, you could put it, on my list, you could put him as high as five. I guess. Because the person that I have at three, you could drop down under him, I guess you could say. But, like, everybody else that is in the top five would have to be above Bill Russell based off what I'm saying or my criteria. But Bill Russell, in terms of a defender, like I said, second grade is all time. Offense is really what holds him back for me. He's not really much offensively. He just, you know, it just is what it is. But the fact that he was able to really just quantify or stop Wilt, Wilt was seven foot one, two seventy five, with all that athleticism I just described. Bill Russell was six foot nine. They say he's six ten, he was six nine, maybe even six eight. Two fifteen pounds. Bro had 60 pounds, he was more athletic than bro, and he was taller, and he was able to literally negate Will for a majority of the playoff series. Like, I don't even know what to really tell you on that. That's insane. That is literally insane. And the fact that he played 13 seasons and had 11 championships in those 13 seasons is crazy. Now, I will say those Celtics teams are insane, but you got to give credit where credit is due. He's a winner. Um, he was a coach. He was a winner. And that's just really what Bill Russell was. He just embodied a winner. And all the stuff that he did outside of basketball as well was important. It just had it had nothing to do with my list. But if you want to put that as well with any, then yeah, he should be probably higher. Because he probably did the most in terms of a lot of these guys outside of basketball. All right, next. Now, I'm going to be honest. Now, if the way this this list going to get, you can't tell me I'm not biased. Like, you just can't. Like, the way this list is finna get, like, if you've ever heard me speak on some of these guys that's in the top 10, you can't tell me I'm not biased. Like, I'm as unbiased as it gets. It just is what it is. Now, coming in at number nine, Magic Johnson. Um, in terms of, like, one-way players, Magic is probably the best player of all time. Like, in terms of people that just play one way. Like, like everybody else that's on my list is gonna be people that's good defenders, good offensive players. Magic is going to be the best person that I would say is just a one-way player. And, but that's how good offensively Magic Johnson is, in my opinion, especially as a playmaker. Um, it just is what it is. And then he has the height and the athleticism to go alongside that. Like <laughs> Magic Johnson's ability to see the floor, I don't care how you want to describe playmaking. Magic Johnson's playmaking ability is just something I don't think we'll ever see again. Like, 
I just don't think that's even possible to even match. Like, his ability to just make any possession be a fast break. Pretty much any possession. He can... The, he, a lot of people only have the ability to really play make in terms of, like, help defense and play making towards, like, like shooting threes. It's only really two guys that's really like that in terms of playmaking. That can playmake in all ways in terms of like their gravity, in terms of like being able to get shooters open, in terms of like being able to hit people on cuts, hit people on just anything. Magic Justin is one of those two players. I would say he's the best. There's another guy that I already said, but I'm not going to say it and just call it up war. You know what I'm saying? So we're just going to keep it moving. But Magic Justin, in terms of like an offensive player, I'm not going to say he's the best offensive player. I would say he's definitely top four. Um, I think he is the best point guard of all time. I know people really do like to say Curry, but like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Where Curry is the best shooter of all time, I think Magic is the best playmaker. The best pass, plus playmaker is an argument, I think. But the best passer is not close. Like, it's literally just not close. Like, Magic is so clear of everybody. It's kind of similar to how Curry is just so clear of everybody of shooting. So yeah, it's it's a definitely a debate I can understand. There's only like. Even on the greatest of all time list, it's only two people that separate them. So it's still close. As close as it pretty much can get, I will be honest with that. I did used to have Magic a lot higher. But with the fact that he's just not the craziest defender, I think people kind of do underrate his defensive ability sometimes. But, yeah, he's not really a defender for real. So I'm not going to give him that. Um, but, yeah, his rebounding ability for his position, I know he is 6'9". Um, his ability to play multiple positions is really important to me i think he's very versatile in that i think if magic bro magic is another guy that if he played in today's era where the game is just so fast break oriented so turnover oriented like even with magic johnson getting the turnovers he had or he, that he has you kind of live with that because he's just such a great playmaker such a great passer and he's gonna just establish so many more fast breaks man magic johnson will be crazy and i'm gonna be honest the influence of magic johnson is not talked about as much as it should be as well and yeah like i said bro if you think that this list is has any bias involved this is the perfect person that will show you that it's not i grew up literally hating this man hate watching this man because he was literally like the rival to my two favorite players kobe bryant <laughs> it just is what it is like it just is what it is like there's not really not much i can say about it kobe bryant in terms of offensive ability one of the best offensive players of all time scoring ability easily a top five scorer of all time his ability to score in pretty much any way like where i was talking about with Jokic offensively what is the hole for Jokic? what is the hole for kobe scoring ability his ability to just not want to pass his ability to just believe in himself so much that he thinks that him shooting a shot over two people where he has somebody wide open is that like a weakness for his scoring like i would more so say that's offense like bro his skill and his scoring ability is just unbelievable i'm gonna be honest it is it is pretty unbelievable i would say i probably would still have kd over him it's just certain things that you just can't teach like kd ability to, i don't think people understand that kd what you're seeing now is such a slow down version of kd like <laughs> it's not even funny like <laughs> what kd used to do at 610 is insane like it's just certain things you just it's just god given Kobe was, he had a lot of things that was God-given, but, like, he really, like, had to work for a lot of his skill that he ended up having. And that's just what Kobe really was in terms of, like, the mama mentality and all that other stuff. So it's just, even if, like, with a person like me that I always used to watch him and hate, you just kind of got to respect it, you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Coming at number eight, Kobe Bryant, his two-way ability. Um, I think he had, I think he had years where he kind of had to be, like, more of a two number two option so he was just a much better defender but as he became a number one option he just wasn't as good defensively in my opinion um it's just simple as that um i always thought kobe was a little overrated i've seen some people say kobe is a top five perimeter defender that is just not true i think kobe is a great perimeter defender i just don't think he's elite all time at all like people that think that i don't know what to really tell you on that um, I don't think he's like an elite off ball defender. I don't think he's an elite on ball defender. I think he has years where he was definitely one of the best on ball defenders in the league. But if you start putting all time into it, I would disagree. Um, I just would disagree. But and you can't deny the fact that he is a two way player. You can't deny that. You can't deny that he's one of the best scorers of all time. You can't deny that. You can't deny the fact that he's one of the best offensive players of all time. You can't deny that. And you can't deny that he's just a winner. Um, you could argue that he should have more MVPs. 
For 20 seasons, he had 18 All-Stars. I would argue that was gassed. I think he has, like, the most uh, all-defensive teams for guard or wing or whatever. That was gassed, 100%. If the, all, the All-Stars may be gassed less. So that could kind of tell you how I kind of feel about them All-Star team, all-defensive all teams that people be trying to quote and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. that that When it comes to accomplishments, comp- that's why I don't weigh it too heavily because there's some that can just be swayed. Like, some people deserve more MVPs. Some people deserve less awards. It's just kind of just a fact of the matter. But, yeah, Kobe Bryant comes in at number eight on the list. And like I said, bro, if you think I'm biased at, with having him at eight above some people, I probably even would say multiple times is better. I can't do it. I just can't do it. Coming in at number seven, Larry Bird. Now, Larry Bird was a tough one to rank because I just personally think that Larry Bird, as an offensive player, is better than Kobe. I think he's a better rebounder than Kobe. If you want to say a better defender, that would go to Kobe. That would definitely go to Kobe. But I think as a post defender, I would say Larry Bird is a better post defender. There's certain things on defense I would probably value more out of Larry Bird. I think as a... It's, it's certain things that people don't really acknowledge on defense that Larry Bird did like as a leader his ability to communicate and stuff like that that is that is important to having a top tier defense like the Celtics used to have in the, in that era and Larry Bird was really good at uh, being a great vocal leader communicator especially on defense so there's certain things that people just don't value but I would still say Kobe's a better defender I would still say Kobe's a better scorer um I would say Larry's a better shooter I would say Larry's a better offensive player overall because where Kobe is a better scorer, I think Larry just a much, much, much better playmaker. I think Larry's one of the more underrated playmakers of all time. I think Larry's one of the more underrated passers of all time. I see people have the discussion between Larry Bird and LeBron where they talk about the, the playmaking and passing. Playmaking may not be that close, to be honest, because LeBron is, he's in that echelon, you know what I'm saying, of the top two. But when it comes to passers, LeBron is better, but like, I don't like how people act like it's not close. Like, it's definitely pretty close, especially in terms of playmaking out of the post, passing from multiple different areas of the court instead of just really on, from the three-point line. So, yeah, I would say Larry Bird is close because he's kind of a little bit more versatile as a passer, I would say. But um, I think what makes Larry just a better offensive player than pretty much everybody I've said on this list besides Magic, Curry, Jokic, Trying to think who else I had. But yeah, he's probably the best offensive player besides those three. It's because he just has a versatility offensively. Like, again, I like to look at Jokic as like a, just a better offensive Larry Bird. That's how I like to look at Jokic because Larry don't really have weaknesses offensively either. I'm going to be honest. Like, yeah, I would say Jokic just has a, a better touch. He's a better three-point shooter. Larry may have a better mid-range. I would say Jokic has a better post. But, yeah, I, I, I would say Jokic is pretty much like a center version of Larry Bird where he's probably a better passer than Larry and stuff like that. But Larry's just a better defender, in my opinion. So, uh, Larry Bird comes in at number seven. I'm going to be honest. This is, is another guy to, that was hard to put on this list because as a Heat fan, it's just tough to give credit to Celtics players. I just can't cap to you. But being unbiased, I, I actually do like Larry Bird, though. I can't lie. But, yeah. Coming at number seven, Larry Bird. All right, and next. Now we are getting into players, in my opinion, you could have a case for them to be number two, in my opinion. That's pretty much going to say a lot for the rest of this list. So coming in at number six is Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, if you've seen what I said my criteria was at the start, if, if my criteria starts with peak, goes prime next, then goes to two-way, Shaq has, like, one of the if not the best peak ever, <laughs> especially offensively. Like, it's not, like, offensively, like, you can have all that versatility, but when you're just unstoppable, <laughs> it's just, like, nothing really you can say. Now, there was definitely holes in Shaq's game, like, that you really just couldn't say for guys like Larry Bird, guys like Jokic, guys like Magic, guys like maybe even Curry. But, bro, he was unstoppable even with those holes. Like, you could do the hack shack but if you doesn't foul in him, what are you doing to stop him? Because you're not stopping him from you can't get him away from the rim. And if he drop steps you, you're in the rim. You're 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 putting the rim. You're is is just no stopping it. Like he had I think Shaq's drop step is honestly one of the thing, moves that like people don't really discuss. And it's one of the most unstoppable moves of all time. Like people talk about the MJ fade, the Kareem hook, the the uh Dirk uh fade kick. 
They like they talk about all that. But Shaq's drop step, I swear, I never hear it. I never hear it. Shaq's drop step, I would argue, is definitely in there. <laughs> definitely has to be. But yeah, Shaq, I believe as a two-way player, like I said in the centers, I think is a little overrated. I would say he's a little overrated, personally. I don't think he's as good of a two-way player as people act like. Um, I think as a rim protector, he's he's good. I don't think he's elite. I don't think he's elite like a lot of these other guys, I would say, like, um, I'm not going to get into him because I don't want to spoil. But, yeah, I, I would say Shaq, um, he's a winner, too. He had the four rings. He even did it on two different teams. Now, he didn't do it like Kawhi. We had the, the ring on one team and a finals MVP on one team and a finals MVP and a ring on another team. He only had the finals MVP with one team, but he did have another ring with another team. So, yeah, um, he also has that one MVP. Really crazy that him and Kobe only has one MVP. Like, I'm going to be honest, to be honest with you. But that just really showed you, like, the superstar talent in the 2000s was crazy. But I will be honest, the role player talent, in my opinion, is just, in terms of role player talent, that's one of the worst eras of, like, the past 40 years in terms of role player talent. Like, two, 2010s is kind of bad, too. I think the back, no, 2010s is kind of bad, too. Like, just in general, 2010s is pretty bad, too. I think 2000s may be worse, but 2010s is pretty bad, too. But, yeah, uh, yeah, Shaq comes in at number six. Not really much else to really say here. Um, he played for so many different teams. It's actually hilarious. But yeah, Shaq comes in at number six. Coming in at number five on the list. Number five on my list, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, for a lot of people, is top three. I personally think as a winner, a compliment, I can understand it. As a player, though, I will put him as the third best big all time. As a player. I, if you see my center list, I had him at number two. I'm not mad if you put him number one. I have him at number two. Based off what I value, what my criteria is, I have him at number two. And for the bigs, based on what I value, my criteria, I have him at number three. It just is what it is. Um, I think the 70s, arguably the worst era. I even, You could even say, I, I would say because like the 60s was like only eight teams, but like, with it only being eight teams, there's so much talent on each team that like, in terms of like what's the top talent in the league and what every team has, I think the the team by team discrepancy wasn't nearly as bad as it was in the seventies, in my opinion. Especially because like things like the ABA being like popularized and stuff like that, more so towards like the later sixties, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but yeah, seventies uh, in my opinion was probably the worst era, and that was when he was pretty much I would say at his peak. But he does have a crazy long longevity, which is another thing I'm not too high on longevity. I do value it. But I'm not like, that's not like the end all be all for me like a lot of people. A lot of people will say like longevity first. Like, no. I value when you're at your, your best. Then I value your prime. That's another part of you being at your best. There's certain guys that you could say like, I'm going to be honest, Kareem is a guy you could really argue. He has multiple primes. You could argue that that's all one prime like I would. And then you could just say like he just has a crazy longevity. The longevity is just not as important in my opinion in terms of like the 25 greatest players of all time. That's just me though. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. But yeah, Kareem, six MVPs, most ever. Two finals MVPs, um, the six championships. Another thing that really kind of brings him down for me as a big, him playing with elite playmakers in Oscar Robinson and Magic Johnson for a majority of his career is just tough. Like, that's just really tough to, like, try to act like that didn't happen. Like, that is a real thing. Like, he literally played with that. For the majority of his career, and as a big, that makes it a lot easier. Now, does Kareem have arguably the most unstoppable move of all time? Yes. Why was it so unstoppable? Because if you look at the centers in his league, Kareem is seven foot two. I don't think people understand that. Kareem was seven foot two with a crazy long wingspan. The sky hook is unstoppable, but it's really unstoppable because he's the tallest player in the league, damn near. And he has one of the longest wingspans in the league. Like, what are we talking about? So, like... It's unstoppable, but like when you put context with it, you know what I'm saying? If he if he's going against a guy like Hakeem, is it going to be hitting the same? A guy like Shaq, is that hitting the same? A guy like Tim Duncan, is that hitting the same? That's all I'm saying. Is that hitting the same? I would, bro, I, I, would, I would love to be able to time travel all these guys to see who looks better against who, but this is just my opinion, and I, I just got Kareem at number five. He's still top five all the time. If it's, if it's a shame to be top five, I don't know what to tell you. I don't really know. Coming in at number four, no matter how many times I change, revise the list, this guy stood still firm at number four. Stood still firm at number four, Tim Duncan. 
Um, Tim Duncan is a definition of a guy that you can't really base it around the box score. In my opinion, if I had to say who was the second best defender of all time, Tim Duncan. If I had to say who the third greatest defender of all time, Tim Duncan. Um, you could argue he's the second greatest as well over Bill Russell, but yeah, I, I'm 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 gonna give Bill Russell his credit for the day. You know what I'm saying? That's just just what I'm gonna do. <laughs> just is what it is. Now, uh, um, Tim Duncan has some crazy feats in terms of like his ability. I think out of all the players, I think Tim Duncan has the craziest feat because like I was just saying with Shaq, Shaq is probably the most unstoppable player ever at his peak. Tim Duncan against Shaq in his peak stopped Tim Duncan or stopped Shaq he stopped Shaq I don't even know I I Hakeem stopped Shaq but that wasn't peak Shaq that was just Orlando Magic Shaq that was his prime but peak no so yeah bro I, I like bro the fact that Tim Duncan has that in his briefcase has that in his back pocket it's really tough to it's really tough to debate it. Like you could really go for these bigs, these three bigs, you could go Tim Duncan five, put Kareem at three, put the next guy four, you could put the next guy at five, put Tim Duncan four, put Kareem three, you could put Kareem three four, put Tim Duncan three, put the next guy five. It's a lot of different ways you can go about it. But honestly, Tim Duncan, bro, his post ability, I think as a playmaker, he's very underrated. His ability to play in the system, to be, his ability to be unselfish, his ability to have an extended prime where people may be like, bro, his stats drop. Bro, as a defender, Tim Duncan ain't drop. <laughs> as a defender, in those championship years with the Spurs, Tim Duncan was still one of the best defenders, not if not the a top three rim protector in the league. Still, at the, as, as old as Tim Duncan was, he still would, so I would even argue that he may still be in his prime. Now, as an offensive player, that's really what's holding it back from me trying to actually force that to be his prime still. So I would probably say, like, his last for sure prime year, maybe 2009, maybe 2008. But he still, as a defender, was still amazing. Like, it's just not much you can say. And the fact that he himself was a dynasty, I would argue... Um, the five rings where the ability to get five rings understand this <laughs> the ability to get five rings and never get a ring back to back bro i don't think people understand that's long that's real longevity he has five rings and never won one back to back and he came into the league with a ring his first year and his third to last year he had a ring that is real longevity. Like, like his rings are literally like, they're not like w this year and then in, in two years they got, bro, they're actually kind of spaced out. Like, they're act that's pretty impressive. I'm going to be honest. So, Tim Duncan playing 19 years. Tim Duncan having these crazy peaks in terms of defensive ability. Tim Duncan having these, this versatility as an offensive player, in my opinion, that really goes unnoticed. His ability to play out of the post, whether it be on the block, whether it be from the elbow. Tim Duncan having that touch off the backboard, very underrated, in my opinion. And yeah, Tim Duncan comes at number four on the list. And coming in at number three. Now, I will be honest, man, the, bro, the amount of hate I would have had on this list if the other revisions would have dropped. Oh, man. Now, you can not say, even if I had to do that too, like I did originally have planned, I was going to have it based off, I think he's the best big, and I didn't really want, like, it's really tough to rank bigs versus wings and guards. Let me say this again. It's really tough to rank bigs versus wings and guards. It just is. I don't really know what to tell you. It just is. And um, the reason why I value him more than a lot of these other bigs is because when you look at Tim Duncan, for his era, he played with an elite guard. Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili. He played with two of them. <laughs> like, and I don't think people understand how underrated those two guys really were for their era. Um, when it comes to Kareem, I already went over that. When it comes to Shaq, he played with Kobe, man. Then when he went to the Heat, he played with D-Wade. Uh, Bill Russell had the Bob Cousy's of the world, the Sam Jones of the world, the John Havlicek's of the world. When it comes to Wilt, he had the Jerry West of the world. Now, if you want to say the other years without Jerry West, then you could argue Hakeem Wilt should maybe even be higher. Um... But yeah, Hakeem is one of those bigs that didn't really have a, a a top guard. Like, Kevin Garnett is another guy I would say didn't have a top guard. I think guys like uh, Giannis, another guy that didn't have a top guard. We I would say Jokic has years where he didn't have a top guard, but he still was super duper elite because Jamal Murray was injured. But the year that he did win, 
he had an elite guard. So, like, it's tough. It's tough with Jokic. But, yeah, Hakeem, bro, the best defender of all time. Let's get that out the way. There's nobody better. Best post player of all time. Whether you want to say post offense, post defense, he's the best all time. I think as an offensive player, Hakeem is underrated. As a playmaker, I think he has he has things that's left to be desired. But as a rebounder, he's really he's very 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 much elite. I would say, a, a rim protector, defender, very much elite. I think that as a seven foot two fifty five center, he's very very versatile, very very athletic for his size. Bro, there's just some things that you just can't teach. Like when I was talking about Kobe and KD as a scorer, when it comes to Hakeem and all these other guys as a defender, we probably will never see a person be as good a defender as Hakeem. I would say in terms of somebody being the best at one particular category, bro, like, whether you want to say, I, I would say, bro, Hakeem, the gap between Hakeem and everybody else that I want to have is not because, but I can't do it because Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan is right there, too. Tim Duncan is right there. Tim Duncan, and you got KG. Like, nah, it's, it's, I, I can't even do that. I can't even do that. I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it, but I couldn't do it. I, I almost did it. But yeah, but Hakeem, bro, as an overall player, I did have him at two. I did. But I was going to be like, bro, I can do this because that's my second favorite player all the time. So I could put him at three. But nah, with Hakeem being um, able to play like this as a big without really a elite guard for pretty much majority of his career, I guess you could say Drexler came eventually. But like, I don't think uh, Drexler was elite at that point. Um, but yeah, I guess you could say some of the guards I was saying wasn't elite. Like, Jamal Murray, was he a, in the playoffs, Jamal Murray was elite, though. So, I guess that would be my argument there. But, yeah, uh, he has two finals MVPs, two championships. The fact that Hakeem only has two defensive players of the years, I would argue is crazier for Hakeem in 18 years to have only two defensive players of the years than LeBron only having, like, four or five MVPs or MJ having, well, MJ had played, like, 15 years. Five MVPs in 15 years is not even... That's pretty wild, I'm gonna be honest. That's pretty crazy. Because, like, uh, Kareem played 20 years, had six MVPs. Michael Jordan played 15 years, and he had multiple times where he uh, retired. <laughs> and he has five MVPs. That's pretty wild. I'm not gonna lie. So, like, that's a lot. I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty much a lot. So, I really put more so say, like, LeBron. It's more underrated than LeBron. I feel like he for surely deserved more defensive player of the year. That's not even really a discussion. But you could also argue that there's so many players in that era that deserved defensive player of the years like the Patrick Ewings, the David Robinsons, the Matombos that like okay, it's fine. But yeah, Hakeem Olajuwon comes in at number three on my list. Coming in at number two probably the toughest person that I really had a gripe with bro. I wanted to put him number three bro but I just wanted to have the best big and the best overall player number two and number one because bigs are just tough to rank. So he was still gonna be kind of two but I didn't want to just troll him just to troll him. Um, my second player player all time, number two all time in my opinion, um, LeBron James. Um, LeBron, when it comes to LeBron, his peaks, his primes, I think his peak, if if you want to say Shaq, that's fine. But I really think LeBron, 2013, LeBron is the greatest player ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. The primes, he has, bro, LeBron is a guy that you could say have so many different primes. You could say that he has his Lakers prime. He has his second stint Cavs prime. You could say he has his Heat prime. He has his young, early Cavs prime. I think it's just one long prime where you can go from 2008 to, like, 2017. I really want to say his prime. Whatever year you want to say that he just really just didn't care about playing defense no more, on the cast, his second stint, that's why I would say his prime ends. And I know a lot of people going to be like, bro, what about 2018? That may be even the best Braun. Not to me. <laughs> Not to me. If you've seen my criteria about defense, him being that crazy on offense is insane. I will say that. As an offense, that may be his offensive peak. I'll give you that. 2018, Braun may for real be his offensive peak. I'm not really here to argue that. But as an overall player for LeBron prime, I don't think that offense is just making up for how bad he was defensively for that year, in my opinion. Especially in comparison to LeBron peak and prime. That's just me. So, but if you, like, I'm gonna be real, though. Like, it's really just a discrepancy of just picking and choosing what you even think a prime is. Some people just think a prime is seven years. Some people think a peak is three years. I think a peak is one year. I think a prime is just your best of their best years compiled together. 
So yeah, that's just really what it is. Now, if you want to say you want to pick and choose what year, what year, this year, that, and the third, that's what I used to do. But I had to kind of, I wanted it to be a little bit more consistent, so I had to stop doing that. But yeah, LeBron, um, what he's done longevity wise. If you're a longevity person, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know how it's possible to put LeBron one. I gotta get that out of the way. I just don't really know how it's possible. Like he just has too many questionable things about his career um, in terms of like the 2011. Um, in terms of like the team switching, those are just things that I just, in terms of being the best, the GOAT, especially if you actually are a person that acknowledges him to have all these primes, I don't personally see how you could do that. And I'm going to be honest, he's my second favorite player. He joined my favorite team. And I still say that. I'm just trying to be as unbiased as I can be. But with that being said, even if I was being biased, my bias, I've never been a person that's ever said LeBron is the best player ever. I've never been a person that ever said LeBron is the GOAT. I don't know why. I just never did. It just never brought myself to do that. Um, as far as versatility, if you want to say best all-around player, you could make an argument for LeBron. His defensive ability, um, in terms of his versatility off the ball, I think LeBron's one of the best off-the-ball defenders ever. I think on the ball, LeBron is very overrated, though. Like, people try to say LeBron could guard one through five. That isn't just not true. Now, if you want to say one through four, there was definitely years on the Heat where he definitely could guard one through four. That's not really debatable. But fives, I don't, I, I've never really been somebody that can. He, maybe he can get a stop a game, but, like, no, he can't guard fives. He can't. Especially if you want to say, like, guys, if he was to play, uh, if Miami Braun was to go against Jokic, I would love to see that, actually. I, I would love to see that. I can't lie. I would I would love to see that. I can't, I can't, even, I can't even cap. <laughs> I, 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 hey, I, I was gonna say something, but I, hey, I would just love to see that, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, LeBron, for what it is, he's done so much in just, I guess now 21 years, where he's averaged now 27 for his 21 years. That's insane. Four MVPs, four Finals MVPs, four NBA championships, a rookie of the year. In my opinion, if you really think and. Me personally, even with me thinking that with LeBron being number two, I think that the 2017 Cavs had a chance. 2018 Cavs had no chance. I don't. I the, the fact that he faked the injury still is weird to me, even with him being my second favorite player. But yeah, bro, and he did. He tried to do it again this year, where he acted like he was going to get surgery. I don't even know what happened to that, bro. Bron just like bro, Bron. The way Bron be trying to control the media and narrative be kind of weird sometimes. I can't even cap. But more on basketball, bro. I would I believe there's definitely some influence on Braun, but I think people may overrate Braun's influence a little bit. But I think there is gonna be uh I think the guys that did influence guys like Luca, I think Luca has an obvious influence from Braun. Um Ben Simmons, that's an obvious influence from Braun. Um You could even argue guys like Scotty Barnes, but I don't know. I don't know. Um LeBron in my opinion longevity is a real big deal for LeBron. I think that may be the one thing that really hold me back. But even if I value longevity, bro, like, even if you think that he's had this super duper long prime or way longer prime than I think, I just don't, I just don't, I don't know. I don't even know how to really describe it. I think since the 2020s, I think AD has been the best player on the Lakers for every year except for maybe one year, and that was the year that AD was hurt like crazy, and LeBron had a crazy offensive year. I, uh, LeBron was crazy. I don't remember what year that was, but LeBron played like he didn't play enough games to like meet the requirement, or he played either he played like one uh, just enough game to meet the requirement to be the most points per game, or he didn't. I don't really remember. But LeBron, for what it is, one of the most interesting careers I'd say all time. And all right, last but not least, the greatest player of all time, in my opinion. I know a lot of people are gonna disagree. I don't really see how, especially if he turns to greatness. Like, I don't understand, how, like, what could even be the argument here, man? Ricky of the year, defensive player of the year, five MVPs, six finals MVPs, six championships in 15 years. Like, there's never been a person more dominant in their era besides Bill Russell. But Bill, Bill Russell, in terms of a player, just doesn't even compare to how good Michael Jordan was. Michael Jordan, even if you want to make this the best player of all time, Michael Jordan is probably the most athletic player ever. Like, he has the quickest first step ever. I would argue guys like D-Wade is up there, but Michael Jordan, 
quickest first step ever. The highest vertical ever. One of the fastest players ever. You could say a lot of... Uh, you could argue, I think Braun is in that conversation for one of the most athletic. I think Giannis is in that conversation. I think even D-Wade is even in that conversation. But the fact that he just... Bro, I don't think people understand. Like, bro... He made his jump shot was so tough to guard because he jumping full. Like, he giving, he giving a full jump every single time he shoots. Every time. It's like he had springs in his leg. So, like, you got guys like KD that just got the height advantage, so he just shoots over everybody. Michael Jordan was doing that just off of jumping. So, even if you want to say based off best player, I don't know. Um, only other person I would even have to say would have an argument would be Hakeem and... LeBron again, but like for best player, and I think best player is more of a debate. But go, bro, I don't know what you want me to do. Only reason he wasn't winning the start was because, in my opinion, I would say was because of the team. Now, he did have to change his play style to become a better team player, which I honestly give Michael Jordan credit for that. Personally, I honestly give Michael Jordan credit for that because a lot of players not doing that, um, a lot of players just really not doing that. But for Michael Jordan to be a mid-range player and average over 50% from the field for majority of his career is insane. I don't think people understand. Michael Jordan played in a era. Bro, I went over it, bro. Hakeem played 18 seasons and had two defensive players of the year. So just imagine how many big men Hakeem had to compete with for defensive player of the year, year after year. Michael Jordan has one of them. Now, did Michael Jordan probably deserve that? I'm going to be honest. <laughs> that may not be something he fully deserved. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you. He may not have fully deserved that. But that's neither here nor there. Michael Jordan to be as dominant at the rim. At the rim. In an era where there's so many defensive bigs. Night in, night out, he had to go against. But then, it, it, I don't think people even understand. He didn't come into the league as like this crazy mid-range score. He just... He evolved into that. Like, he, he came into the league as, like, this super athletic player that just nobody could stay in front of and nobody could really just stop or guard. And then as he got better as a mid-range scorer, he just became even more unstoppable. Like, his athleticism just made him such a better defender. Like, his physical traits that he has, like, he has super long arms, super big hands. Like, he's 6'6", but he has, like, a crazy wingspan, crazy big hands. Quick for, like, it's just so many things that you just can't really just even discuss. It. Like, it's just so many God-given things. When it comes to, like, this top three, like, they all have super-duper God-given things. And it's just really tough to, to replace some of the things that they were just given. And just the things that they were able to do. It's just, like, no other guard could really do things that Michael Jordan was doing. Not really too many forwards that could do to some of the things that LeBron does. And there's not really any other big that could really do some of the things Hakeem was doing. It's just simple as that. That's just the best way to describe my top three. Um... Michael Jordan, for the most part, in my opinion, though, like, he was just the embodiment of a winner. Whether you want to say he was a bad leader, he just kind of did what it took to win, in my opinion. That's kind of how I looked at it. Um, if you take the Wizards years off, his like his career stats get even crazier. But even with the career, even with the Wizards years, for his career, he averaged 30 points per game. Bro, if you even just go look at his playoffs, like on a series to series base, bro. MJ is just different. I'm gonna be honest. It's just, it's just, it's just a whole different league of greatness, in my opinion, in terms of like what he would do to win. The, the, the hate to losing, the, like the hate towards losing that MJ had. Only a couple other players really had that. I'm not even gonna say it's just Kobe, but Kobe definitely one of them. But yeah, like it's just some things that you just, just can't replace on MJ. And it just, it, it just goes it just goes to show like in my opinion he's the greatest player of all time. I understand people want to have these arguments debates with LeBron. Um, me personally, even with LeBron being my second favorite player of all time, D Wade being my favorite player of all time. You go back and look at MJ for his era, it was just no competition for him. He was the team to beat. He was never really trying to chase the team to be. He was the team to beat. Like especially once he once once his team started winning, he was winning. It just really wasn't no ifs ands or buts about it. Like he had to he had to come into the league to chase the Celtics. He had to beat the Pistons. He had his I guess you could say he had his teams to chase. So I kind of did chat right there a little bit. But for the most part, once he started winning, 
it just is what it was. Like there was nobody touching him. Um, if, like I said in the center video, if it was for MJ, Hakeem may have even more rings, which would put him a lot higher in most people's list. This list could look a lot different if Hakeem ends up being the guy with more defensive player of the years because maybe MJ took a defensive player of the year from him. MJ took a rookie of the year from him. MJ may have took MVP awards from him. MJ, MJ may have took some finals, even though Hakeem and MJ never played each other in the finals. I don't know. But, hey, Michael Jordan is my number one player all time. Greatness. Um, that's just really what it is. Like I said, we got a current NBA list coming very soon. I am going to do the top 25 players in the league today. That will be dropping. That probably had to drop in the season because I took so long with the greatest players of all time list. But I hope y'all boys did enjoy. This stuff took a lot of time, a lot of research. This is my opinion. Hopefully when y'all do lists, when y'all come up with things, when y'all have opinions, it actually do be truly y'all opinions. I know a lot of people base their stuff off the media, but I hope a lot of people don't really do that. It's, I hope it's a lot of stuff that's based off y'all. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Old heads be having these crazy takes, but I'm going to be honest. They stuff be so crazy, I know it's their opinion. I know it's their opinion. I can't even lie. That's what they truly believe. But yeah, that's going to be it. If you guys want more, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. We got more videos coming, more hits, more, more all that. It's your boy Fix him out there. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!